Oxygenic photosynthesis depends on what we call a non-cyclic photophosphorylation scheme, sometimes called a Z scheme. And in, it's really looks very complex, and we're going to try to break it down for you. The main thing you need to concentrate on are that there are two different photosystems. Okay. And there's photosystem 1 shown here, and photosystem 2 shown here. And we're going to start off with photosystem 2, because uh, this is the pathway of electrons through uh, these photosystems. So, as I said before, each photosystem is surrounded by these light harvesting complexes that are funneling light energy. So if we begin by looking at photosystem 2, when it, its chlorophyll becomes oxidized and loses its electrons, then the marvelous thing that cyanobacteria invented is that oxidized photosystem 2 is able to immediately regain electrons by ripping apart a water molecule. And in the process, it generates oxygen gas and protons. And this is occurring in the lumen of the thylakoid. So it's releasing protons by ripping apart water and releasing oxygen gas. The oxygen gas uh, escapes to the atmosphere, but the protons stay in the thylakoid lumen. And as you can see, um, as more and more water molecules are ripped apart, we will accumulate more and more protons in the thylakoid lumen, which is an important consideration. Now, what about the electrons that photosystem 2 gave up? Those electrons from photosystem 2 go down a series of electron carriers. And we will consider this as simply being the electron transport chain, the photosynthetic electron transport chain. It's analogous to the electron transport chain in mitochondria in that as it's a series of oxidation reaction, reduction reactions, they're passing off electrons from one component to the next, and in the process we get pumping of protons from the chloroplast stroma to the interior of the thylakoid, the thylakoid lumen. So here it shows the pumping of a proton into the thylakoid lumen. So the electron transport chain in photosynthetic membranes pumps protons across the membrane to generate a proton gradient or to help generate a proton gradient across the membrane, just like the electron transport chain does in mitochondria. So if we follow the electrons, they go down the electron transport chain, and they come to photosystem 1. So while photosystem 2 is absorbing light energy and becoming oxidized, the same thing is happening with photosystem 1. Photosystem 1 is simultaneously also being illuminated, irradiated with light energy. Its reaction center chlorophylls become oxidized, and it gives up its electrons and reduces ferrodoxin, which is sort of an electron carrier intermediate. And ferrodoxin then reduces NADP+. Plus. Okay. This is our photosynthetic, or NADP, uh, our photosynthetic electron carrier. NADP plus is our photosynthetic electron carrier. And NAD plus is reduced to NADPH. So this is exactly equivalent to NAD plus being reduced to NADH during respiration. So here is our complete electron flow from water molecules through photosystem 2 down the electron transport chain. At the end of the electron transport chain is oxidized photosystem 1. And from photosystem 1, uh, upon absorption of light energy, um, these electrons then are used ultimately to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. So in the process, we have generated an electron, or I'm sorry, a, a proton motive force across the membrane. And just like we saw with oxidative phosphorylation, in chloroplasts across the thylakoid membrane, we have 
in ATP synthase, which is very similar to the mitochondrial ATP synthase. And just like the mitochondrial ATP synthase, the proton motor force drives ATP synthesis. So in summary then, non-cyclic electron flow generates oxygen gas. It generates a proton gradient across the membrane, which is used to power ATP synthesis and it generates reducing power to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. And this equation that I've written here at the bottom summarizes all of that. So here is an energy diagram of non-cyclic electron flow showing that light energy is used to boost electrons to higher energy states then we have the electron transport chain that go decreasing in energy and that is used to uh, indirectly power ATP synthesis by generating a, a proton gradient uh, and when the electrons arrive at photosystem one again light boosts them to an even higher energy level which is enough to reduce NADP plus to NADPH So here is our summary of non-cyclic electron flow. We have two photosystems. Okay? And I would like you to remember that these two photosystems do different things. Photosystem 2 gets its electrons from water. It's going to give its electrons to the electron transport chain. And the main products of photosystem 2 that we're interested in anyway are oxygen gas, ATP through chemiosmotic ATP synthesis. Photosystem 1 gets its electrons from the electron transport chain. It's at the end of the electron transport chain. It gives its electrons to ultimately NADP plus to make NADPH. 